Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and today we are looking at our original mini moss tree nano aquarium. This was built about two months ago, and it looks a little dark in there, but with our handy dandy flashlight, we'll be able to uh, get a good idea of what's going on inside of this aquarium. So as it is, uh, we've lost a little bit of water from evaporation. But the real uh, focus point here is this massive swarm of ostracods that we have raised in this container. Just look at them. There are so many. And they are photo attractive, so they will approach the light over time. They'll all gather up over there on whichever side we are lighting up. It's really cool. Uh, here's a better look. We have two different species of ostracods in here. We have our tiny round ostracods and we have our much larger clamshell shaped ostracods. Now you may be wondering, you know, what is an ostracod? They're also called seed shrimp and that's for a good reason because they are essentially tiny shrimp inside of a little clamshell. They have a fully formed uh, little shrimp body in there and occasionally you can see their little feelers coming out of the shell opening. It's also how they swim around. So our original ostracods, uh, the small round ones, which you might see here and there, uh, they've been with us for quite a while, and you guys have seen them on the channel a bunch of times. But these larger clamshell ostracods just kind of appeared in one of our aquariums this year. I think that's really cool when something new just appears in one of your jar aquariums. That's awesome. Uh, before that, we had never seen these little guys before. And uh, this is real-time footage. This is not sped up. They just move very quickly. They are very active. But I think that they came from our black cow aquariums. That's where we originally found them. And this might sound a little crazy, but I think that they might have hatched from eggs that were in that substrate uh, that we used in those projects. <laughs> That's my theory anyway. But I love these guys, and there are so many of them. They are doing so well in this nano aquarium. It's crazy, really. I mean, I did not mean to raise such a large population of bladder snails, but I am great of <laughs> bladder snails, of ostracods, but I am grateful to see them in here. Uh, recently, we have upscaled this project. We built another one on a much larger scale with the hopes of emulating the success of this project. And I hope that you see why. Our moss is doing very nicely, both underwater and above the surface of the water. Our nano tree aquascape has faded a bit into the aquarium. Um, you can still kind of tell that there's uh, meant to be a little tree in here, but that's normal. You know, over time, your projects will sort of evolve a bit and take on their own character. Don't be too worried if things change a little bit beyond uh, what you initially wanted for your project. So I'm not going to break this down and reset it or anything because it doesn't look exactly like I had hoped for. Uh, you know, why would we? This is a huge, very successful ostracod culture. Now, this little container is, I want to say, a liter, give or take, uh, but it's very effective. So we're going to pop the lid off of here, and we're going to do a little bit of maintenance. There's a look at our moss. Looking good up here above the surface of the water and underneath as well. That's the same moss that we use in our other projects from our moss farms. And by maintenance, uh, it's very simple. Uh, all that I mean is that we're going to add some water in here very, very carefully. And we're going to add a little bit of food. Other than that, I have not done any water changes. I haven't done any real work on this tank. Uh, though I see that we will need to remove some of the duckweed and maybe even trim some of the moss uh, before you see this tank again in the future. Uh, but I've been feeding them pretty well. And this I would consider part of the maintenance routine. We're going to add a slice of cucumber, and because we have so many little friends in here, we're going to add a second slice of cucumber as well. I have been very carefully feeding this tank with just a little bit more food than they need every session, every time we feed them, which is roughly once a week or so. Uh, these <laughs> ostracods, uh, they will consume detritus and even algae, and in this tank, uh, off camera, uh, during the first month of setup, we had a paramecium swarm, and then we had a green water algae explosion. And I think that was partly cured by these new ostracods uh, acting as a filter feeder, uh, you know, eating all that green water. But I've been carefully overfeeding the tank with both cantaloupe and cucumber, and things are going well. 
Uh, on a side note, I happen to catch this little frog in here while filming. Uh, these little guys are always in the fish room. It is becoming a routine habit to just catch them and put them outside. I could keep these green tree frogs as pets. I could probably breed them in here very easily. But I think that they belong outside. You know, I don't want to lock them in a little tank or anything. But our tiny little invertebrate friends, that's a whole different story. And check it out, guys. Uh, after just a few minutes with that cucumber in the tank, they already figured out it's there. They are approaching. They are feeding. They are scraping little bits of cucumber off of that slice. And I think that's really cool. You know, uh, most of our pets, they tend to take a few hours at least to realize that there's a food source in their ecosystem like this. But these ostracods, they move so quickly and so often, I think that they happen to just find it more readily than we would expect. Uh, I'm just blown away by this tank, you guys. If you're into ostracods, if you like to raise them, I know quite a few of our friends on YouTube actually, uh, you know, build ostracod aquariums with their kids, you know, with your son or your daughter or whatever. And that helps to get the kids into nature and stuff. I think that's really cool. So if you'd like to learn how to build a thriving ostracod culture, please check out the build video for this tank. I showed you exactly how to do it. Um, I haven't done any work on this project off screen. I've just watched it develop and continuously added food. Uh, yeah, guys, it turns out cantaloupe is totally fine. You can feed these tanks a little bit of cantaloupe and it won't hurt anything. Uh, but remember when you add your food to your aquariums that uh, you don't want to do too much and break the cycle. Uh, kind of like that movie Biodome with homeostasis. You know, you don't want to ruin uh, the balancing point of the aquarium. So, yeah, just be careful. Uh, but these ostracods, they like to approach the substrate layer. They like to burrow down in there and presumably feed on anything they might find. And they kind of bury themselves as well. You know, they don't live forever. So when an ostracod dies, it kind of falls down to the substrate and slowly gets buried by dirt and detritus. And I think that's why there are so many fossilized ostracods out there because of, you know, just the way they live and their life cycle. But I think this tank is glorious, you guys. Here we are just a few minutes later, and there are even more ostracods feeding on that cucumber slice. That is awesome. They're going to grind that up. They're going to use that to create more ostracods and further increase our population in this project. I have no idea what the upper limit would be for uh, the number of ostracods we can raise in here. And there are a few bladder snails as well, uh, though I kidnapped some of them for our larger moss tree project. Uh, that we built just the other day. So, yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. I want to get the bladder snails breeding up a little bit more. Uh, but generally, our bladder snails are there to clean the glass and consume any loose material laying around. And the ostracods are doing a good job of that on their own. Uh, the glass is completely clear. And, you know, we don't have much mulm in this project. <laughs> Surprisingly, as I have put a fair amount of food in here. I've also fed them with sinking pellets meant for things like crayfish or algae eaters in uh, traditional aquariums. But here, uh, yeah, I think it's doing very well. Now this tank is a little bit dark, but that's mostly just from my lighting. And I am happy to announce that we have upgraded our camera equipment a little bit and our lighting equipment a little. So you may see some better visuals in the next upcoming videos. Otherwise, I'm having a great time. Our little project here is developing quite nicely. Big thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. Patreon's getting a pretty long list, and that means it's time for our monthly t-shirt giveaways. That's something I've been uh, planning for quite a while, and I'll have more information on the community tab or on the Facebook page here pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, once a month t-shirt giveaway, randomly chosen from our Patreon supporters. It's going to be a lot of fun. Big thank you to all of our friends, our Patreon members, and our YouTube members. You guys are awesome, and you keep me going. Big thank you to the general audience as well. I love your comments. I love just chatting with you guys, and I um, love hanging out. I love building these projects and you know, building up this hobby, this new niche on YouTube that we are creating. Our little backyard DIY apocalyptic jar aquariums. I love it. So thanks for watching. Check out my channel for more.